From your first book, Writing for the Green Light, you talk about how so many screenwriters devour screenwriting books and they learn structure and format, but they don't learn what to do once they've finished that screenplay. Yeah, it's it's that used to drive me nuts. I would say that book specifically, I wrote it because um, it, it was the book that like was never written that I always wish sort of existed in some capacity. Uh, most of those books, like I think, what was it, Sid Field who wrote, he wrote screenplay. It was like, that was the one that really kickstarted the whole three act structure. It was this amazing book about how to structure a script and how to like organize ideas. And I know there's some outdated things in it today, but like at the very end of it, there's like five pages, and that's an exaggeration, but there's like this like very thin chapter at the end that's just like, oh yeah, you know, and go get an agent and do those. And it's like, they'll take care of it. I guess that's the critical thing is a lot of people write a script uh, and they just sort of expect that that's all they need to do and um, somebody else will sort of carry it from there. And getting an agent or a manager isn't necessarily the answer to that problem. Agents and managers are great. I don't think you actually need one when you're starting out. Uh, that's my personal opinion, that's not like advice. But it's, it's um, my personal opinion is I work with writers who don't have agents all the time. They manage themselves. Um, they uh, are able to just sort of um, present themselves well and use their own ability to get the door open, so to speak. They have a great personal branding that they've done on their own online. Um, they're extraordinarily professional. They uh, make opportunities happen for themselves because they go out there and they cold email, they cold call, and they initiate opportunities for themselves. Um, they're willing to showcase their work uh, before just demanding that they get paid up front when we've never done business before. Obviously, everybody gets paid for their work, but it's, it's sort of, um, sometimes you have to show your goods in order to showcase like I'm the real deal and I can, I can do this. Uh, so that's, you know, I, I guess overall that's sort of the, the general kind of flow is you have to be able to um, do it on your own. You have to be able to get your talents presented uh, on your own. And is that how they reach your door, so to speak, is through a cold email? I mean, that's one way to do it. I mean, it's, it's, I've, I've, personally, I've, I've worked with people who are referred. I've worked with people, yeah, who've, who've shown up uh, um, via email, via LinkedIn, via any number of sources, who've just reached out to us uh, 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 sort of directly just saying like, look, I've, I've written romance books and I'd like to write movies or I've written a ton of movies and I'd like to keep that going. And you know, they just sort of, yeah, approach it that way. It's, it's the answer is it, it, ultimately, yes, it's, they're just reaching out blindly. They're reaching out blindly, but it's not like they're reaching out with random projects. They're reaching out with projects that sort of fit our core expectation, what we work with. Uh, and they um, are just sort of showcasing like, look, this is what I do. I have these scripts. Will you take a look at them? Can we do something? And we've hired a lot of writers that way. And they are realistic that like the first log line they present isn't going to turn into a green light. Like it does sort of have to build a bit in terms of the relationship. So that's a real old style of thinking maybe that I need this agent or manager to walk me through the door. Yeah, look, a lot, I mean, Again, this is my personal opinion, so I mean, I, I'm not, uh, full disclosure, like I'm not giving sure, career sure. advice. <laughs> Just in a general sense, it's like, um, you have to think about what do agents actually do. Agents are actually in the business of blocking opportunities by putting up a paywall. So they are restricting your access in a way and trying to get the highest price possible. They're not out there trying to make sure that every one of their writers are constantly getting work. They'll sign a group of writers, and then if two out of 10 are like, hey, people really like their work, they're gonna put all their attention on those two out of 10. And they're gonna make sure that those deals are really, really successful in those. And they'll let the others, you know, if you are generate, look, I know a lot of writers who have written independently, and then they go get an agent. Their agent, I call, you know, they, they get involved and they start, hiking prices to unrealistic levels, and then we just sort of stop working with them because the price expectations no longer match the budget where we're working. 
We're not saying that they're not talented and that you know you shouldn't expect reasonable compensation for your efforts, but you can't go from like here to there in terms of pricing overnight just because you sign somebody and they want their 15% or whatever. It just doesn't realistically work that way. So those writers we've actually stopped working with. We've had other writers who've gotten an agent and then they got rid of their agent and they said, you know what, I'm just gonna do it independently. Because I was out there getting my own deals, creating my own opportunities. I was making, you know, writing five, six, seven movies a year at this price point. Why should I give this agent, you know, X percentage for just basically having their name on my screenplay when they did nothing. They didn't initiate the work, they didn't initiate the opportunity, they didn't close the deal. So we've had a lot of writers who actually have stepped away from their agents and come over and just manage themselves. They just have a website, uh, uh, their own uh, social media outlets, and they just sort of initiate the deals on their own. They go to the markets by themselves, et cetera. Right, so similar to actors who say, you know, my agent's not getting me any work and, you know, but they weren't maybe doing things behind the scenes to get work. You know? Correct, yeah, look, I mean, like it's, it's the frustrating reality of any industry, like it's not isolated to Hollywood. It's, it's, it, we just know it, it's easier to see here because you know, it's, it's, it's a creative driven industry, et cetera. But it's like, uh, if you are writing a script and you want to get your script in front of people, you have to do it yourself just because you wrote it and it's sitting there as a PDF on your computer, uh, that's not going to get an offer presented to you by email. It's, it's you have to go put it out there. And then the first thing people are gonna do is find every reason in the world why they shouldn't read your script. Because they got 50 scripts to read that week. And they are, if, if, if you don't have that online presence, if you don't have a personal relationship, if you haven't been referred to them, or if you haven't presented, if, if you write a blind email, but you present yourself well, you explain why you wrote what you wrote, um, that can get attention. Like the company I'm working for now, uh, we produce very specific types of films. We do Christmas romance films. We do really cozy female driven romances in really beautiful, gorgeous locations, like very clear cut kind of movies. And so if somebody's pitching, you know, some horror film or some avant-garde coming of age story, like we're not gonna look at it. It just doesn't fit what we need. We're looking for stuff that's gonna keep our pipeline going. But when people come out and they're like, hey, I can write Christmas romances and I have, here's a script and 10 log lines of Christmas romances. We'll take a look at it. And we've actually bought a few of those. And then you have a few, you said women in peril. So like these thrillers, that's all one, like some kind of cyber stalking or something. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do women in peril thrillers as well, like very lifetimey kind of films. Um, there, we don't do as many of those. Like I would say probably like 55, 60% of our output right now is like Christmas romance movies. It's a wonderful bread and butter sure, sure. vertical, yeah. I, I love what you said too about just some people just want to have them on in the background. Yeah. And, and I think that's very true and it, it lends to the season. Like if you want to feel the season, having it on in the background, it, the plot doesn't even matter at times. Oh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I mean. It, it just, it the plots like are kind Christmas. of recycled a bit it, too, right. but uh, yeah, it's it, but it's kind of like that Yuletide log, you know, when it was just like an hour video of a fireplace burning, you know, and it was just uh, people would put it on the TV and it had the crackle pop sound and the visual, and it felt like the holidays. And yes, that's absolutely transferred into the holiday films. It's I, I've been doing I've been in the TV movie world for over ten years, and that's never changed. The, the volume of content has actually gotten bigger.